guys, it's Tom here and welcome to the Liverpool Nottingham Forest post-match reaction and analysis video and let me know what did you think of the game, who was your man of the match, Diogo Jota. Uh, goals are like ketchup for strikers, that's what Cristiano Ronaldo said once and Diogo Jota said before his goal drought ended against Leeds United that he's taking inspiration from Cristiano Ronaldo who didn't have as long a goal drought of course as Diogo Jota who went 32 games without a goal and now he has four goals in two games so goals are like ketchup you are waiting for the first drop and then it starts flooding out of the bottle absolutely brilliant analogy and uh, it's also uh, the english has a saying that you are waiting for a london bus for half an hour and then two buses come along at once and that's what happened with diogo jota and goal scoring he went a full calendar year of not scoring a single goal and it doesn't look like it he is the most informed striker at Liverpool at the moment and his second goal was honestly one of the best goals of the season if you didn't watch a close replay of that goal make sure you do because there is a whipped in cross by Andy Robertson and Jota chests him down then flicks it up with his knee and volleys it half volleys it and the ball is only touching the ground at the back of the net at the far corner absolutely stupendous marvelous finishing by Diogo Jota who was my man of the match by the way and in the first half how on earth did Liverpool not score we had 10 shots Nottingham Forest had one and we really battered them in the first half yes Nottingham Forest had a good chance which Alisson saved in the end, but Liverpool were knocking on the door without scoring, we were quite wasteful with our chances, we didn't hit the target with enough, uh, but then the floodgates opened in the second half. At, if, at half time if somebody said there will be five goals in the second half, I would not believe that guy, because Nottingham Forest were defending bravely and resolutely, and Liverpool weren't exactly firing on all cylinders, but that's what Diogo Jota can do. Out of nothing, he gets a goal. Fabinho heads it across goal and Diogo Jota from like one yard out heads it in next to a sleeping Renan Lodi. And then the floodgates open. But then Liverpool conceded from a long throw and that has been a big problem for Liverpool. Credit to Nottingham Forest and credit to, I think, Steve Cooper, that's what their manager is called, for recognizing that Liverpool will be uncomfortable with this tactic and Nottingham Forest kept at it. They kept throwing long ball after long ball, long throw-ins into the Liverpool box and Liverpool got rattled and they got distracted. Nottingham Forest have a lot of tall, big physical players and we just couldn't cope with it. Neko Williams who grew up through the Liverpool academy, so it's a painful goal to concede for Liverpool, not just because it knocked the momentum out of Liverpool, but also because it's a former Liverpool player who scored, and very classly by Nico Williams, that he didn't celebrate his goal. Morgan whips Gibbside, passes to him, and Neko Williams just shoots straight at Alisson, but it takes a massive deflection off a defender, and Alisson tries to tip it over the bar, but he couldn't. And then Jota scored that brilliant second Liverpool goal where he chests it down, flicks up with the ball with his knee and half volleys it into the far corner. Brilliant, fantastic delivery by Robertson and a stupendous finish by Diogo Jota. And at that moment I really thought, come on, we can score the third goal and kill this game off, but no, Nottingham Forest scored with a second long throw Morgan gives white it the ball falls to him after Van Dijk clears the ball somehow it ricochets back to Morgan gives white and he has a very big area inside the Liverpool penalty box to shoot and that shouldn't happen and I'm sure that Jurgen Klopp will tell the Liverpool players you need to mark the opposition players much better much more in the box because Morgan Whipswright shoots, uh, Konate tries to kick the ball out for a corner, but it deflects off Konate's leg and then it deflects off Trenor Suano's leg and nestles into the corner. Alisson had absolutely no chance with that goal. But then, in the 70th minute, from a ma marvelous Trenor Suano whipped in across, Mosala, even though he's 
pulled back by the defender. He smashes it home with uh, his uh, left foot, I think, side foots it into the corner perfectly in off the post. Mo Salah wasn't he, he very involved in the second half, but that's what he can do. He can get a goal out of nothing and he moves up another place in the all-time Liverpool goal scoring charts. I think now he has he's now number six in uh, the goal scoring charts. Uh, <laughs> sorry, so number six in the goal scoring charts. Absolutely brilliant by Mo Salah and then the game was, uh, you know, very tight still, but thankfully Liverpool held on. And actually in the second half, I'm looking at the statistics, even though Liverpool had 1.8 XG in the second half, Nottingham Forest had more shots. So they really gave it a go and nobody expected Nottingham Forest to do this because they were without a win in so many away games. Uh, it was embarrassing for them. I mean, they lost four games in a row, but the last time they actually won was at home against Leeds. And the last time they won away from home was against Southampton on the 4th of January. So they haven't won away from home in the Premier League for f more than four months. And you can't really stay up if you, if you keep losing games. So Nottingham Forest are in big trouble. They play Brighton, Brentford, Southampton. That will be a relegation six-pointer. Chelsea, Arsenal and Crystal Palace. So it will be a miracle if Nottingham Forest stay up. Mainly because they have uh, um, so many good teams around them. Leicester City beat Wolves today, so Leicester uh, are now above Nottingham Forest in the table. And Liverpool have finally two wins in a row. Can we make it three wins in a row against West Ham? West Ham are also fighting for their lives and we go to the London Stadium in a, during midweek. So we play West Ham away and then we play Tottenham at home. And I think that Liverpool-Tottenham game is absolutely pivotal for the top four race. If Liverpool could win that and win against West Ham, that's four wins in a row. I don't think Liverpool have won four games in a row uh, in the Premier League all season long. I mean, I, I don't remember Liverpool winning four games in a row in the Premier League. And I'm looking at uh, the statistics. Um, oh, wait, we have, won we have beaten... Tottenham and then there was a the, we were beaten Southampton and then there was a World Cup break and then we beat Aston Villa and Leicester so yes Liverpool have won four games in a row but the reason why I didn't remember that is that Liverpool had a World Cup break during that period and also we had a few pre-season games as well but before that I so yeah Liverpool the, the maximum that we did was four wins in a row in the Premier League and we need to go on a winning run if we want to do anything with the top four. It's still a very outside chance and I will be happy with the fifth or sixth place finish. I will be honest, I will be happy with any European football, but I would prefer, much prefer the Europa League than the Conference League. Because the Conference League, like, it's very, very little money and you go to very obscure teams who are very far away sometimes from England and uh, the traveling could absolutely kill the Liverpool season next season but hopefully we get into at least the Europa League I think that's the minimum requirement that Liverpool fans would be happy with but we have tough games coming up West Ham away because they are fighting for their life it's very tough London Stadium always a tough game uh, under the lights and then Tottenham at home no matter what form Tottenham are in it's always a tough game then Fulham at home they just win uh, twice in a row after being on a losing streak. So Fulham are still trying to get into Europe. Brentford, same, even though they got a draw against Aston Villa today, which is actually the perfect result for Liverpool. But Brentford at Anfield will be tough. Then Leicester away. Leicester again fighting for their lives. And again, that's a, an evening game and usually fans are more up for it that way. Then Aston Villa at home. Aston Villa are above Liverpool, even though they played one game more. So that's not going to be easy. And Southampton away on the last day of the season. I'm not saying I'm wishing Southampton relegation because they are a really, really well-run club. They have been in the Premier League for 11 years in a row. But the last game of the season, usually the bottom team is already relegated. And unless a miracle happens, Southampton will be relegated by that time. I just want to check Southampton's uh, um, you know, fixture list. They play Bournemouth next. Now that is a relegation six-pointer. Then they go to Newcastle now. Then they... Did 
they play Nottingham Forest, Fulham, Brighton and then Liverpool. And they absolutely have to beat Bournemouth and uh, Southampton if they want to stay up. And even that those six points might not be enough because all the other teams that Southampton play are much better than them, even Fulham. So yeah, that's my opinion. I think Southampton will be already relegated by the time Liverpool play them. But if not, that will be another tough game. So Liverpool are back in form, but defensively we looked shaky in the second half with these long throws. And other teams might try this tactic against Liverpool. So let's see what, we, what will happen uh, in the next few game weeks. I'm really looking forward to it. The Premier League season is the most interesting ever. The title race is incredible. I mean, how did Arsenal throw away this uh, incredible five-point lead against Man City? Now they have, they could be one point behind Man City or even four points behind Man City if Man City beat Arsenal and then they win their game in hand. Um, and But the top four race is very, very absolutely crazy. The race for Europe and the fight against relegation is the toughest and the closest ever. So I'm really looking forward to the rest of the Premier League season. I hope you guys are as well. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day. See you later, guys. Good night.